Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen on behalf of the Community Libraries of Providence and I'm coming to you from my basement workshop here in Providence, Rhode Island. And today we're going to be talking about this lovely model kit from Tamiya. It's a 148 scale Nakajima A6M2 Type N uh, to Type 2 float plane. This is a fighter plane and it was nicknamed Roof by the Allies. Uh, yeah, basically this is a zero fighter plane which has been converted into a float plane so that it could work off of, uh, well, off the water, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so this is an old kit, it's been around a while. Uh, I checked on scale mates. I think this originally came out in 1973 uh, and this kit is continually being reissued and it's been out for a long time. Yeah, it says 1973 right on this. So it's a very popular kit that's been in their inventory for forever, you know. And here's the box art, which I love some of these old kits and these old boxes, even though they continue to reissue this. This is actually a pretty new kit right off the shelf of a store, but it does tend to show you some old kits that, I don't even know if all of these kits are even in existence anymore, uh, or haven't been released in a while. Like that it talks about a Hughes H500 helicopter. And I guess the Harry has been a while. Been around. Um, sorry. But hey, you know, and the Zero, Type 2 Zero has been around for quite a while too, and still, that, you still, still see that one around. Anyway, <laughs> so, and here's one right here. So we've got one built. And I may have shown you this ages ago in an early uh, video of ours on the YouTube channel when we were starting this out back a ways during the lockdown. So what's fun about this kit, this particular model here, is that this one was built by a kid in our model building program after school. And it was built... Uh, by a young girl and she was having uh, one of our work study college students assisting her in the building process so this is a combination of um, of that girl and a uh, college student from Providence College that was helping her out so this is kind of a fun memory for me that the two of them were working on this kit and uh, the girl moved away, and so the model kind of sat there, and of course the college girl, you know, she graduated and is now uh, teaching somewhere, you know, <laughs> elsewhere in the country. So, um, so that's a nice memory for me, but, you know, it's kind of fun because this is a kit that, as you can tell, it, it, it's, it's, it's youth-friendly, so this is something that kids can work on, and like I said, it did have a uh, college... Uh, student assisting but you know this is not that complicated a kit for a kid to work on so um, I just added the, the paint decals because this had already been assembled and was basically just sitting there just waiting for a little TLC to finish it up you know and I have it now here in my collection just because you know it's a fun memory of that program and those particular people so memories anyway here's the instruction sheet that because i've got another one here because this is a, a kit that i tend to use in the model building workshop with the kids so the assembly is not too bad and the story uh, information on this is really interesting which i'll get to that in a moment i'm just going to get to you guys here so some of the steps here the cockpit interior engine and there are bombs which are optional if you want to build those. They're there. And the assembly sequence is as such. One thing that makes this popular with kids, I find kids tend to struggle with landing gear and having these large floats was a little easier for them. 
This also has a little trolley you can put it on if you want to do a scene or something or have it on a tabletop. Although it, it does tend to sit okay on its floats like this, but there is a trolley here whoops, that you can assemble and sit it on that if you so desire. There's also a ladder you can add to it. And there's a crew figure, which is standing up. There's one pilot, I believe. I believe he's in there. Yes. Not painted, but hey, there's a figure in there. And then you get a number of painting options. And to be fair, there's really just the two types of uh, color schemes. You either have the, uh, the light gray or gray greenish color from the uh, early part of the Pacific War, like 41, 42, which is colors we're seeing here. And then it has the later dark green over light gray, which I guess is like from like 43 onward. So you have those options as well. So the idea of this plane was, as the Japanese were realizing that war was coming, and they were going to be needing aircraft to uh, assist them with operations throughout the South Pacific, they knew that they were going to run into situations where they were going to be fighting in these uh, Pacific islands, and they were going to need to have uh, fighter aircraft available and other types available to defend those islands while they're trying to build airfields, you know? So this way they could have a squadron of aircraft available. They would be working off the water. So while you're building a runway, which is gonna take some time, you've got these things that can provide air cover until your airfield is ready which is kind of a brilliant idea if you think about it. So naturally the, uh, the flight uh, performance of, this, of the Zero is going to be um, degraded a bit by having these floats. I mean, obviously it's not gonna go as fast as it would without these things. Cause I mean, look, look at them, they're gonna be heavy and awkward. So it did have a speed disadvantage with all of this on it, but yet the maneuverability and combat ability of the plane still tended to stay. So it was still a decent fighter, even with the added weight. So not bad. And you could dispatch these things to all kinds of islands throughout the Pacific, including the north of the Pacific, as I believe these things were out in the uh, Aleutian Islands as well, not just the uh, tropical parts of the Pacific. So it talks about here that these things were used in the Solomon's campaign, in particular, like the Battle of Guadalcanal, and how these things were, you know, during the battle for Henderson Field, because, you know, planes based in Rabaul were having some issues getting all the way down to uh, Guadalcanal, so they had these things based, you know, in, in areas closer that could uh, strike at Guadalcanal. It does give you an interesting little map here, along with the story of all of this. And I believe there's a little right up here about, about the uh, the 30 kilogram bomb that they had, which I believe is what this is here, but it's not completely clear that you can add. But the bomb was a bomb that was, um, it had a timed fuse. So they would drop the bombs over a flight of enemy aircraft and they were phosphorus bombs so they would try to disrupt and uh, kind of destroy squadrons of bombers or whatever uh, by flying over them and dropping these timed bombs to break up the formations yeah so that's some of the things that they were doing during the battles you know for Henderson Field and Guadalcanal and that's all in 1942 so it says that this plane Made its debut flight on like December 8th, 1941, or it might be December 7th for us, depending where you are on that dateline. So basically, the first day of the of the Pacific Wars was the maiden flight of this plane. Ironic. And uh, these things are in service by 1942. 
So again, like I said, the assembly is not complicated. The bomb was a little tricky, so I did find that kids weren't thrilled with the bomb, so therefore <laughs> left them off. Um, also didn't bother putting the ladder on, which I don't think is, you know. So it's a kind of a standard fighter plane configuration that the kids seem to enjoy. Well, of course, it depends on the kid, right? So, all right. Let's look at the pieces in the in the box. Oh, there's some things that were built from this kit. Looks like we use some of this. Uh, so here's a the cockpit with glazing, and this version here is three pieces. So this is for one you can have it sliding open if you wish. You have the parts here. Uh, yeah, all right. So there's the parts for the trolley, and the floats are here as well as the fuselage halves. So basically, this is the Tamiya Type 2-0, the A6M2 uh, Model 11, I think, uh, zero. This is what this kit really is. And all right, so here's the trailer. I believe it goes to this one that the kids had. They did try building it. They did have some issues with this. Looks like this is sagging a tad. But that's, you know, that would sit underneath it if you wanted to have it done that way. So it has a low parts count. Yeah, you get your pilot figure, well, two of them, you know, one sitting, one standing there. So like we said, this is this kit's from 1973, but it's still, it's an oldie but a goodie. I still think this is a great model. Could it be more detailed by today's standards? Probably. Uh, you could probably get, get, get some aftermarket sets and really, you know, bring this further along if you so desired. You might get a better engine now. But that's not bad. And again, this has got the uh, classic, you know, Tamiya falls together, goes together well. A lot of pluses with, uh, with these kits. And I guess this would be a different part considering, you know, it's not the same as the regular Zero Fighter. This one's got the, you know, places to fix the floats. And you're not dealing with the undercarriage wheel wells, because it's a float plane. So in here we have some of the pieces from, from this kit here. There's the ladder such as it is awfully big. And here's the bomb assemblies here, which I'll try to see if you can see that. Anyway. But they have some rather large um, attachment slots in there. It's not the best looking bombs, to be honest. Yeah, I guess if you're really careful, you could probably do a good job with it. Which I'm assuming you guys would be. <laughs> yeah, all right, so that's this is the spare glass from this kit. Here's a complete set here with both. Uh, just a closed one piece glass canopy and there's the other one if you want to do it open. So those options exist. You know, another pilot figure here. Decals are here, and as as we mentioned, there's quite a few of them. I find the Tamiya decals are generally okay. Uh, I know some people have issues with these. I tend to find if you put it down with some setting solution over a uh, gloss coat, um, they tend to work fine. But you know, maybe there are some Salvaset or Micro Microsol or one of those, you know. Do I have a Salvaset here? I don't know, I have a Microsol Microset right in front of me here. And some other stuff. And one thing that's nice with these old kits, the old Tamiya kits had these little posters with them, which I think are really cool. And so you can see. Well, as I 
crash the airplane. <laughs> uh, so here you have, you know, the green one and the gray one. There's been some debate over the last um, decade, maybe, maybe, maybe longer. Came to my attention, as I would say, over the last decade, as to what color uh, the early war Japanese aircraft were. So this has got that gray-green color that uh, Tamiya had put out not too long ago, I guess within the last 10 years. So that's what this has on it. Because it's been debate as to what, what shade of gray they really were back then. There's an ash gray, there's this one, which has got a bit of a green to it. So there's been some debates. And they've been going off of, uh, you know, chips of paint and so forth from wreckage, especially wreckage that they found at Pearl Harbor of crashed and destroyed Japanese planes. And they try to match the colors, for example. Anyway, there's a lot out there on that if you want to do some reading. Um, but anyhow, bottom line is it's a fun zero fighter plane with floats. It's 48 scale. It's a nice, nice size, easy assembly as a, uh, as I was saying, quite quite fun to build. Child friendly overall, yeah. Um, just a winner. Um, I think it's great. I mean, I suppose, you know, some other manufacturers might have the flaps so you can operate them and maybe some newer uh, aftermarket things could spruce this up a bit more. But it's a low-cost kit. This is not an expensive model at all. It's been around for quite a while. And uh, kind of simple and fun. And it's got a, you know, the floats make it a little bit more of interest for kids, too. And adults. <laughs> anyway, so that's a quick look at the uh, A6M2 Type N float plane, Type 2, the roof. All right, we will see you guys next time on the Model Building Workshop. Take care. Keep on building.